California's gold is produced in association with KCET Los Angeles and is seen statewide on California public television. This series is endorsed by the California Teachers Association, the California School Boards Association, and the California Library Association. Well, hello everybody, I'm Huell Hauser, and here we are, we've just pulled over on the side of good old Highway 1, which just happens to be one of the most beautiful highways, one of the most scenic highways in the entire world, running all the way up and down our California coastline. Now this is just about as beautiful as it gets. Look down here at this shot with the ocean, with the rocks, with the kelp beds, this is really beautiful. We are about 20 miles south of Monterey, just a little bit north of Big Sur, and we've pulled over to get our first look at our eventual destination on this adventure. That's it over there in the distance in the fog. It's a big old volcanic rock, and that rock just happens to be one of the most historic spots in the entire state of California. We're going to climb to the top of the rock, and if you're interested in what we're going to find when we get there and just why that place is so historic, well, as always, you're invited to come on along with us as we continue our search together on the volcanic rock for California's gold. <music> Now here's a rock that definitely makes a statement. It's impossible to drive on Highway 1 and not see it. And I'm sure over the years, many people have wondered as they've driven by it, just what its story is. Turning off the main road and onto the little road that led up to the rock, and as it kept getting closer and closer and bigger and bigger, we were pretty excited about the adventure we were about to have. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Hill. How are you today? Welcome to Point Sur State Historic Park. Well, we are delighted to be here on this windy, blustery day, but that's really what this place is all about, isn't it? That's right. This was put here specifically for that reason, because of, of the inclement weather along here and the possibility of, uh, of shipwrecks in this area. So it's, it's a perfect location for it. The elements, that's what we're in here. This is a hardy place, always has been. Absolutely. And the people who lived here had to be a really hardy bunch. And uh, Mike Baker, who's one of our docents here, will be telling you about uh, about how they lived uh, on this rock. Uh, well, we're going to get the, what is it, the 50 cent or the $5 tour gonna, today? You're going to get the $3 tour oh. today. <laughs> okay, nice to <laughs> nice meet you, Nice to meet you. Sir. You're one of the docents here. The docents, I've heard, pretty well run this place, absolutely, don't Absolutely, absolutely. We have almost 100 docents, and without them, we, it would just be absolutely impossible to, to operate this facility. So we're really happy to have them. Well, i tell you what, you all may get used to this, but for those of us from other parts of the state, when we come and see scenery like this, this is absolutely beautiful. It's a gorgeous spot, isn't it? And it's beautiful down here, but I have a feeling it's even more beautiful from up there on the top, and that's where we're going today, right? That's correct. We're going to be taking a nice walk up on the top. Now that brings to mind, well, you're leaving us. You're turning us over to the docent. I am, and you guys have a good tour today, and I hope you have a great time. Thank you, sir, okay. very much. I thought you were going to have a limo down here for oh, us. Oh no, that would ruin the ruin the atmosphere. We uh, have to set the set the pace, the tone, and the atmosphere by walking up. If we drove up, that would ruin the whole thing. So we're going to walk to the top of the rock. It's 360 foot rise in about a half a mile, and we take frequent stops so that you do not get too tired. So we'll <laughs> we'll be easy on you. All right, let's go. <laughs> Well, here we are. We've come about five miles. <laughs> Stretching it a bit, but we're, that sounds good to me. <laughs> it just feels like five miles. But here's our first stop, and look at this view. Looking, well, we're looking south down the California coast, and I guess this brings to mind, because it's, it's kind of a beautiful day today, but there was a reason why this lighthouse was put here back in... 1889. It was started construction started in 1887, finished in 1889. But the weather conditions, the fog, the storms, 
Uh, this is a position where the southbound, northbound ships changed uh, courses. And uh, this area was bypassed in the early 50s when the other lighthouses were built because of the technical uh, impossibilities of building a, a lighthouse on top of the rock. So wait a minute, they couldn't even get a lighthouse built here in the early days? Not in the early days. This was a, uh, the Mariners petition for 11 years. Uh, it wasn't funded until 1885. Construction started in 1887, finished in 1889, and uh, it's been in operation since that time, continuous now, operation. when you talk about fog, the fog is actually lifting pretty well now. It's clearing out into a beautiful day. Where would the ships run into problems out here? Uh, coming from the from the south, if you look off to the south, there's a rock jutting up. That one Cooper, way down there. Cooper, Cooper's Point, and uh, sometimes that's mis, uh, misidentified as being Point Sur. I don't know how you could do that. Because that's a little one down and, there. And uh, it, there's quite a few rocks, pinnacles sticking up from the bottom of the ocean here. And of course, the uh, navigation was not too precise uh, at, in those days, uh, especially under under power. Uh, sailboats uh, stood out to sea, but a, a sailboat coming down the coast would hug the coast, and therefore they'd run into the rocks. And uh, of course, one of the rocks north of here is Ventura Rocks. Before it was unnamed until the ship Ventura struck it and sank, but now it's Ventura Rocks. So Boy, you've got all kinds of information. Oh, I've got stuff I've never told anybody yet. <laughs> My wife is getting tired of hearing it. <laughs> it now, it's, it's just a joy to be here. You will, this is an example of the uh, volcanic rock. This is Franciscan Greenstone. Franciscan Greenstone. Greenstone. Now, uh, when you say volcanic rock, do you mean literally this whole rock? This is the core or the, uh, the, uh, the center of the volcano. Everything else is eroded away. When was this a volcano? Oh, way back in the early, early days. Yeah. Uh, when the St. Andreas Fault was even in this local area here before it moved way back across the country. So you're talking M millions. millions of years, yes. And it's still this whole, it's just one solid volcanic rock. Yes, yes. And the, uh, the rock makeup is, this is a unique geological area in that this is volcanic on this side. A small fault runs down Highway 1. On the other side is the Selenian block. So we have a variation of rocks and geological formations here in this area. So this is a geologic wonder in a way as yes, well. Yes, and it's uh, your typical Tombolo. It's an island connected to the, to the coast with a, with a sand spit. So we also call it a Tombolo. A Tombolo? Yes. And I'm carrying this rock, and I know that when I'm visiting a state historic park, I cannot do no, that. No picking of vegetation or souvenirs. I'm putting it and, back. And please don't throw it in the ocean. I've it'll learned get, because I've been pinched in the past on <laughs> trying to get things out of state parks. <laughs> Hewell, this is about the point that, that we point that we show the uh, first view of the lighthouse. That's it, right over That's there on it. the other on the nor northwest corner of the rock. As and far here. Out these are all support uh, structures. We are uh, called a light station because uh, we have all the support facilities. We're one of the two on the west coast that have all the support facilities, the blacksmith shop, the barn, the dwellings, the pump house, the this, this cistern, everything is here for a complete uh, lighthouse support service. So this is not just a lighthouse, this is a light station. Yeah. Yes, this is a light station. A lighthouse is just an isolated light house building, whereas we have all the support structures here. Now, is the wind always like this on this side of the rock, or is this just kicking up on us all of a uh, sudden? Oh, this is a, this is a very mild wind. <laughs> when you have to lean about 45 degrees, then you know you're in real wind. And this gives us a view of just how rugged this rock is. This is another example of the volcanic uh, origin of the, of the rock. And this Boy. is, we very affectionately call this place the rock. Okay, now we're at the top of the rock, looking down the coastline. That is an absolutely beautiful shot there. And here's the little road that we drove in on off of Highway 1. There's Highway 1 off in the distance. This scenery continues to amaze me. Isn't it fantastic? <laughs> <laughs> Look for days up here, not see the same thing twice. And on a foggy day, I bet you can't even see the ocean right there, can you? One of the most difficult things is explaining to somebody from Nebraska what the ocean looks like on a foggy day. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, we see it today. The yes. sun is out, and we have reached our first this historic our, building. Our first historic building, the blacksmith and carpenter shop. Uh, this was built in 1907. 
the uh, it's one of our first restoration projects. It's completed. We're for a developing plan. A furnishing plan has already been developed. Uh, the farmers and ranchers in the area would bring their equipment up here uh, for the blacksmith to finish fix because they would save time from going into Monterey. Really? It was. A uh, kind of a barter system. You fix mine, and I'll give you something for it. So, so it worked rather well. They had a blacksmith up here all the time. Actually, it was. Uh, they only had four keepers up here, and one of the skills that one of the keepers brought with him was was being a blacksmith. Really? They uh, were not especially hired for that, but it was one of those things that happened in those days. So they would do their blacksmithing in here. Blacksmith, uh, carpentry in here. Carpentry in here. And the blacksmithing in the other room. Ah. And. Uh, of course, they had the uh, one horse up here, which required shoeing once in a while. Now, I've seen pictures of that horse. What were they doing with a horse up here? A horse was required up here to go over to the Pfeiffer Resort down the nice little road that you talked about to get supplies and the mail. So therefore, it was a utility vehicle for them. So the horse would go up and down oh, the yes. rock? Yes, with, with the little buggy behind it. And uh, one of the w wives would drive the horse down to the, to the uh, resort, pick up mails and any supplies that they may need, and then come back up again. Now, where would, where would they keep the horse? The ho horse, and uh, of course, there was a cow also up here at one time, was kept in our next historic structure, which is the barn. Ah, and this so is in this the, was the barn. This is in the final stages of, uh, of restoration. You said there was a cow here, too. Yes, the, uh, one of the keepers would sell milk to the other keepers. There were four families that lived up here, and uh, they would sell milk to the other keepers until they got into a little spat one day, and, and uh, he stopped delivering milk, but they would take the little horse and wagon and go down to the Highway 1 and pick their milk up down at the gate from another farmer. So there was always, always a source. But uh, Blackie the cow was up here. Beauty the cow, I'm sorry, was up here. So there was a horse, there was a cow. I've seen pictures of, of uh, dogs and cats. Yes. Uh, they have, probably didn't have chickens up here. They'd oh, get blown off the top. They have they? chickens up here. One of the stories goes that they would tether the chickens. Uh, tie a string around its leg, drive a stake in the ground, and tether the chickens so they wouldn't blow off. And another story is that the chickens had all the feathers rubbed off on its chest or its, its craw because it would get down and crawl on its stomach to keep it from blowing off the rock. But it's, it's, it's really, uh, the wind really does get bad up here. Well, here's our first view of this wonderful old stone house. Was this the main? This was originally the keeper's house. Uh, there were three, uh, three keepers who lived in this house, and then there was another keeper who lived in a little structure in behind until 1902, and they put the second story on the, uh, on the engine house. Uh -huh. But uh, This was built back in? This was finished in 1889. And, uh, and they got all this stone up here on this kind of a... It was a hoist, hoist railway. A tram system. A tram system. It came from where we parked down below, over the top, between these two buildings, went back and out to the, to the lighthouse. But that's how they also got the sandstone out, out to the lighthouse to build it. I got but all, it, all their equipment, all their material came up on that hoist railway. You know, I'm just picking up on the fact that you said there were four families living up here at a time. Why four? There were lighthouse service authorized uh, four keepers. You normally, uh, for staffing of this station, was three, but this station has a fog signal. Therefore, they have four, four families up here. Now, that sounds good unless the families don't all get along with each other. Well, that's one of the problems the lighthouse service had, and uh, normally they work together and live together 24 hours a day, so it, it, it took a little bit of compromise on everybody's part in order to live together like this. So you would have three or four families living in this one three, house? This, uh, this building has three apartments in it. We have a complete apartment on the south end, and we have two apartments on the north end. So, and the uh, fourth keeper lived in the construction superintendent's dwelling until 1902. I got you. So there were four families. What about kids? What did they do about school? The schools, uh, the, uh, the head keeper petitioned the district, the school district, for a teacher. The teacher said uh, the 
in order to get a teacher, you needed six students. However, the, there were only five children up here at the time, and all of a sudden the five-year-old became eligible to go to school that year. <laughs> so they padded the figures a little yes, bit. Yes, a little bit, a little bit. So there was a school up here for the kids? If, first, initially, the school was up here for the kids, and then eventually there was a school built down by Highway 1. So wait a minute, the kids would have to leave the rock every morning to go and go down there to school? Oh yes, that was a short distance considering where they went later on to uh, down to Big Sur or up the coast a little ways. But this was, uh, they would get on their little bicycles and of course one of them burned out his brakes going down the hill one day and he went back up and he says, Mama, what am I going to do? And I don't know what she did. <laughs> was this considered a good station? Was this considered good duty? to be stationed at Point Sur? Compared to some of the other isolated stations along the coast, this was uh, because of the school opportunities, it was considered almost a good station. And because they had a horse and a cow. Oh, and all, <laughs> all the modern facilities. <laughs> and speaking of modern facilities, I'm just noticing there are cars up here. Well, I'm shocked to tell you, but uh, volunteers have that privilege on Preservation Day only. So, ah, uh, and and uh, I, I'm sorry, I'll hide it next time. So <laughs> you can drive up here, but you like for the tours to. Uh, it's to set the set the mood, and this uh, you know to give you the experience of what a what an old lighthouse keeper would do when he was up here. And, yeah, and it destroys the mood when you when you drive somebody up here. Yeah, I'm glad we walked. I am too. Now what is this building over here? This doesn't look like it's from the 1800s. This is a World War II, uh, part of the, uh, the buildings up here from World War II. We, there was also a sleeping barracks up here. This was the uh, shower, the kitchen, and the bathroom. So wait a minute, they stationed troops up here just for observation up and During, down the... During World War II, there were, in addition to the four families and the keepers, there were about 40 Navy people stationed up here to operate some radar situations and so forth. So you've kept the old facilities from World War II. What is this now? This is the visitor center. Ah, okay. And here, well, these aren't visitors. These are, these are docents, right? These are, these are dual volunteers. Hard at work cleaning the windows. Yes. <laughs> well, that's good. That's important. Yes, it's very important. Now, as a docent, how did you get ex into all of this? Well, um, I've lived in California all my life, and I've driven up and down the coast a lot, and it just looks so mysterious to me, you know, and it looks very gothic at night. And I always wanted to find out what was going on, and they had a little article in the paper about volunteers, so I volunteered, and I've been here ever since. And washing windows. Washing windows and cleaning floors, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at this view. This You're cleaning the window, right. and it's absolutely beautiful yeah. out there. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, now, you're working down here, too. How did you get involved in all this? Well, I uh, moved here from the East Coast about six years ago, and I used to do volunteer work on the East Coast. And I saw an ad in the paper and came to the uh, orientation meeting, and they just sucked me right on in. You get hooked, don't you? Well, it, yeah, the view. The, I mean, look at the view. Yeah. <laughs> I pay someone to do my windows at home. <laughs> <laughs> and what is it about lighthouses that so captivates people? Because I'm sure that it's a thrill for you when tourists come up here and you get to give them the tour and share in the excitement of all of this? Uh, I think because lighthouses are in beautiful places to start with, and America doesn't really have castles the way Europe does, so it's uh, uh, a way to be in a beautiful place and have a little history. And, and they were important uh, historically, which seems to escape a lot of people, but yeah. they were important to the United States. Well, you don't have that many people coming up here. Well, unfortunately, we can only take a few people. We take uh, 40 on each tour, and we only have a handful of tours a week. Yeah. So, uh, so it's really a, a, a privilege to come up here. I think so. <laughs> I'll even wash windows to do it. Yeah, but you get to drive up. <laughs> true, true. That's the biggest privilege of being a volunteer. <laughs> Now, what's the deal here on restoring these buildings? Because these old living quarters are not restored now. Uh, the next uh, building that we plan to, or Gary plans to renovate, is the headkeeper's dwelling. Uh, that'll take quite a bit. The next thing will be the uh, assistant keeper's dwelling. Uh, we'll be knocking the wooden portions off, be mothballing it. Our vision for future use may be uh, to convert some of the apartments into periods. Uh, maybe rent the uh, B&B type thing, rent them out and oh, as fundraiser. Really? 
And uh, so people would be able to come up here and stay up here, stay overnight, and maybe even provide a little security. Well, now that's down the line. We don't want to get people too excited. We don't want them booking reservations yet. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a lot of work to do. That's that's true, but we still like to have them come down for a tour. Well, sure, and the beauty of it is, is that these buildings are intact; that they weren't destroyed over the years. Oh yes, that's fantastic. I mean, can you imagine, like in the '60s, if the Coast Guard had decided to modernize the place and just take these things oh, out? That would be that would be horrible. That sends shivers I don't, up. Your I don't want to think about it. Thank you. <laughs> well, they didn't. It's still here. Oh yeah. And now. We're going to go to the piece de resistance. The gem of the West Coast, the, the lighthouse. Getting to the lighthouse itself, coming down this little trail with this wonderful old wooden railing here, just kind of hanging off the edge of the rock. Um, it's beautiful up here, but this rock hasn't always looked exactly like it looks today, has it? Mike? No, it's not. According to some uh, early paintings, photographs we have, it was a rather jagged, uh, razorback lake looking rock uh, on the top on the top and in order to do any construction the top had to be leveled off they used about 40 kegs of black powder to to build uh, to create the building spaces so they just blasted the heck out of the top oh, of this I bet they thing. made a lot of noise <laughs> what did they do with the rock that they well it's not like today they it evidently went right down into the ocean yeah so you can't do that today I so there was no environmental uh, no, impact no, report no, or no impact statements no wow okay now i can see the top Barely the little red top peeking this out is, over this here. This is the, uh, the, the vent and the roof or the dome of the, of the lighthouse itself. Now, why was the lighthouse put over here instead of somewhere else on the rock? Well, the, uh, they learned a lesson down at Point Loma in San Diego. They built it up on top of the rock. They put it up into the fog, and it was never, never seen in the ocean. So it, its uh, visibility is greater down here at the, the 270-foot level. Oh, look! Oh, this is beautiful. Look at this. And it's the old stone building just like the other. This, this is the uh, same sandstone, same sandstone that was brought over from the Little Sur River on the same railroad. The, the railroad spur ran out here and terminated at, at the rock. What do you mean the railroad spur? There was a hoist railway we talked about earlier oh, okay. that came up the east face, down the west face, and then this was the spur that came out here. To get the material out here. To get the material here. and equipment. There was a huge steam boilers for the fog signal. Uh, a lot of miscellaneous equipment that went into the, into the light in the construction stage. Okay, now we're inside the old lighthouse. And Mike, these stairs, these stairs are amazing. These stairs came around the horn on a square rigger, uh, unassembled. Uh, each stairs, stairway is numbered. It was a small erector set, and it was assembled in, inside the lighthouse, they're freestanding from landing to landing. And there's a little door here. This is where the, this is the drop tube. This is where the weight for the clock mechanism that turned the light. It's like a grandfather clock, you wind up every four hours. <laughs> but it, it terminates down at the bottom. Boy, there's so much to see. Now we're where the this is where the light was. This is the, uh, the service room where the light was. The clock mechanism that turned the lens that could be seen about 25 miles out, out to sea. 25 miles? It must have been a huge... This is obviously not the original lens. No, this is a uh, arrow beacon that replaced the Fresnel lens that was in this cavity at one time. Now, this is still an operating Coast Guard this light is, station. This is an it? active... Not, no, it's a, it's a lighthouse now. It's not a light station. Well, it's, this is actually the lighthouse on the light station, and it still is an active aid to navigation. So ships still... Whew, boy, that thing is... It gets warm. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not nearly as bright as the original it, lens. But it still can be seen the same distance out to sea. 25 miles. 25 miles. The history of this lighthouse is it, it's had chapters. Uh, initially, the U.S. Lighthouse Service manned the lighthouse from 1889 to 1939. 1939, the Coast Guard took over. It was a manned station until 1972 and it is still a monitored station from Alameda by the Coast Guard, so it's still an active lighthouse. 
Well, I'll tell you what, when you look down, look at this grill work down here. Now this is all that we're standing on right here. This and all of this wonderful work around here. When you look up at the top, I mean, all of this is original stuff. Yes, this is all original. And uh, the grill work that you referred to were prisms. These prisms lighted the work area down below. You didn't need a candle. You didn't need a kerosene lamp. It's like the site, uh, street, what, streets of New York City where they would light the subways with these prisms. But so the light from up here would, would shine through these and light the, illuminate the work area. The work area down there where the machinery yes. was. Yes, that's the way it worked. Well, I'll tell you what, we're wearing jackets now, but this light, this room is about 30 degrees warmer than it is outside. Much, much warmer, much warmer. We're going to make toast in a minute. Whoa. Well, this has certainly been an interesting tour. I've been wanting to come here for years, driving up and down the Highway 1 and seeing this perched over here. And as we end our tour, we've really got a very obscure and wonderful bit of history of this old light station. Right over here, Mike, you pointed this out. Now, I would have walked by this and said it was just a piece of an old foundation out here. But this uh, was the uh, original privy. This is the location of the original privy. The original, the original outhouse, outhouse was perched right here. Yes. So even the outhouse had a spectacular view. Uh, providing the door opened in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be my next question. Wonder if you were facing out or face it in. Face in. <laughs> well, great place to read the paper. Either way. <laughs> we have had a great time. It's been my pleasure. This is an absolutely spectacular, wonderful lighthouse. The old Point Sur light station here. Part of one of our uh, parks here, historic parks. Yes, Point Sur State Historic Park. Absolutely. And it's here for all of us to enjoy. You have to be hardy because you got to walk up and walk down. But I can guarantee you, as we have seen today, it is well worth the trip. And this whole area perched up here on top of this big old volcanic rock is a fine example of California's gold. <laughs> Well, hello everybody, I'm Huell Hauser, and I sure hope you enjoyed this adventure. If you'd like to see it again, or share it with your family or friends, or perhaps donate a copy to your local school or library, it's available on video cassette and on DVD. All you have to do is call 1-800-266-5727, and we'll be glad to send it to you right away.